would never consider myself hungry. I don't think it's an easy thing to admit that you need help. It's, it's hard for me to even say that now, that we actually needed the help from others. Hey, Carolyn, how's it going? Oh, it's not bad. How's teaching? But you know, I really, really miss teaching both you and your brother because you made my life fun, and I really, really miss that. But it's, it's still okay. What about you? What have you been up to lately? Well, I've been working on this video about hunger in America. Oh, really? I thought I knew what hunger meant before I started working on this, especially after my trips to Africa and China. And in all honesty, I couldn't believe how hunger could exist in such an affluent country like the U.S. Uh -huh. After some research on hunger, things made even less sense to me. Get this, there are 35 million Americans who go to bed hungry each night. Yet 96 million pounds of food are thrown away each year in the U.S. alone. On average, we eat 5 pounds a day, which means about 1,800 pounds a year which means 96 million pounds of wasted food could have fed over 50 million people for the whole year. That's more than the 35 million people who are hungry. How we can coexist with the idea that we, there's so much excess food and then we know that there are people who are hungry. I don't know how we can coexist with that. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Even so, I still wanted to find out more about what hunger meant and who these 35 million people were. I went around asking people their thoughts to see if they could help me define hunger and if they knew where I could find it. Hunger, I believe, is, is when you have nothing to eat, you just don't have nothing. You would do anything to get food. An ability to feed yourself and your family. Hunger is a shortage of food. It's a problem that you don't really see very much of. You don't really see it in everyday life, but I mean, if you actually look, you could probably see it. Down through Main Street, through the ghettos. In the yeah. southern areas. Homeless. Downtown LA. At the entrance of freeways. After listening to what people had to say, I went to Skid Row in downtown LA and talked to some folks on the street. I was sure I'd be able to get a better understanding of hunger there. This is the Skid Row, um, the Ministry for Christian Assembly Church in Eagle Rock, and um, we bring food and hang out with people every Sunday. And people, there's a need for it, apparently. People come every week. Um, there are a lot of missions, and there are a lot of people like us who provide food. And so if someone around here is hungry, like, they can find food, usually. Do you feel like you're um, able to have food regularly, or...? Yeah. Um, I cook in my room. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was baffled at the fact that people seem to be taken care of in terms of food, but glad to see that at least in LA, there is a lot of help in trying to distribute food to the homeless. But the homeless population in the US account for about 3.5 million. That's only a tenth of the 35 million people I was looking for. Well, I wasn't done searching. I went to the missions and even to the local food bank to see what people had to say. Early 5.45 in the morning. I believe we have the best breakfast on the street. I know. Who's the cook? Can you introduce me to the cook? Yeah. Just, yeah. We're meet the cook. Oh this God, is our cook. Did you cook. take your hand and cook? Yeah. Hi. Hi. We've seen a lot of influx of this one. Yeah. Yeah. It's like overcrowded. Like last year for Thanksgiving, we did like 3,700 meals. 3,700. This year, we're probably getting close to 5,000. Wow. 5,000. Especially right now with the way the U.S. economy is going, a lot of various people are asking for help. Uh, majority of the people that we service are like seniors, um, mothers with children, um, and right now we're experiencing a huge increase in middle class families as well too. Um, and we do service homeless people as always as well too. So it's a, it's a broad range of people that we're serving. Um, we're experiencing more and more people asking for help. Um, and with that increasing need, we're trying to um, expand and increase our organization. But it's really hard when the economy is really affecting us as well too. But yeah, it's scraping in the assembly line today. <laughs> you know, I saw you guys working yeah. hard. Got Get those muscles, muscles going. Yeah. We're glad to help and yeah. Yeah, definitely. It was a good, great experience. Thank you, thank you. Okay. The more people I talked to, the more I realized that the issue of hunger was right under my nose. Well, my family grew up with donations from food bank. How could it seem so invisible? By the grace of God, I'm not on skid row myself. I mean, even my roommate Emily was struggling with food at one point, while I was living with her. 
when I for, when I had graduated from college and I first became a teacher, there was this big gap in between paychecks, essentially, that I didn't anticipate or plan for. And I was like, I don't, you know, very hesitant to say that out loud. If I said like I can't afford groceries this week, that would just I don't know what would that would just be really hard for me to say to anybody. And Carolyn, that's when I realized that. I had to stop. I had to stop. I had to stop my search for those 35 million people because I had to come to terms with the fact that I had been one of them. I grew up in a house of seven and there's four of us kids, my parents and my grandma, we all live in the same house. My father is the only breadwinner. Um, he brought in he he brought in the income for the house. My mom was a housewife. A little over a year ago, my dad was laid off, and that was just really that was right when I graduated when we found out about that, and um, and I didn't have a job yet. My brothers were about to go to college, and um, it was just a very hard time. But another layer to that was that my dad was actually really really sick too at that time. He actually collapsed and um, he, had, we, he had to go to the hospital. Our entire family is as if all of our lives stopped in order to help my dad and it was just a very very uh, very difficult time. Um, yeah. He So, uh, my dad passed away early this, this year. So it became our job to do what he did, yet we had no, like, we just had, like, no idea, like, what no we were doing idea. at all, but we tried. Because during that time, though, when we were just, had, had no idea what to do, the whole community came together. This is why I'm calling you. I had to, I had to stop. To stop. I had to stop the project. People we never met before, friends of friends, people from the hospital, they decided to help and help our family for some reason. Pick up the phone. And one of the basic needs, I guess, was just food. And call you to say, thank you so much for helping out our family. You have no idea how much it meant to us. Um, definitely people like staff members like from my high school, uh, teachers. Another teacher and I would just provide, take turns providing food for him at lunch. My counselor. The counselor came up with the idea of taking him to the Houston food bank. They, they kept offering the help and I kept, I don't know why, but I kept telling them like, no, like, don't worry about me. No, he was very, very reluctant. He kept, he kept insisting he didn't need it. I was almost like embarrassed to tell you. I would actually like walk back from Randall's with milk and I would drink it on the way back and people would always stare at me but I was just like, you know, I want to know. And this is this is all I'm going to have for like the next few days. That's really, really hard for a high school senior to accept and to worry about being seen walking into this place where people need help. I just didn't want people looking at our family in like a way that's like, oh, like, you're the you're the person that needs help, but it would have been impossible for like me and us to like do by ourselves. Like I don't know if I would be where I am right now if not for like all that help. Like I don't know if I'd be here, sitting here, like at USC. Like I don't know. There's just so much that they did for us. I'm really proud of this guy, and he's gonna do well. Bye, man. Hunger, 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 hunger is the need for a person to listen to you, to care about you, to love you, to make you see them as an individual. I never expected that through making this video, I would discover that the issue of hunger was so close to home. I wouldn't even admit it to myself until I literally faced the facts. The pride of kind of overcome the I know that it's not just my family. There are 35 million more people out there. It could be your neighbor, your friend, your classmate, 
they are people like you and me. It's not easy to admit when you're in need. It's not easy to live in America, one of the wealthiest countries in the world, and have to admit that you're unable to put food on the table. It's not easy. But if we are to fight the issue of hunger, we must commit to doing it together. Without the help from others, there was no way my family would have been able to move on. Needless to say, there are a lot more people to thank. Better start calling. <laughs>